There are many ways to summarize data in Excel. For example, we might use some dynamic array functions combined with some other functions, or maybe a pivot table, or possibly even the sub total feature. Now in Power Query, if we want to summarize data, we can use the group by transformation. But Power Query has a different purpose to Excel. Power Query is used to prepare data before calculation, while Excel is primarily about calculating on that data. Therefore, the group by transformation, while it performs a similar task, we use it in a slightly different way. Therefore, in this video, we're looking at that transformation, group by, and seeing how we can use it inside Power Query. So if you're ready, let's get started. So here we are inside Power Query, and you can see the data that we are working with through all of our examples. We have a date, customer, product, sold by, and value columns. And through all our scenarios, we'll be summarizing this data. Now there are two ways that we can get to the group by transformation. First of all, it's in the home ribbon. We can see it there in the transform section under group by. It's also in the transform ribbon as the first icon there as group by. So when we select that, it opens up the group by dialog box. And you can see that we have a basic and an advanced option. The basic option only allows us to summarize by one column, while the advanced option allows us to add extra columns for our summary. We can also add extra aggregations if we want and add new columns. In a few seconds, we'll work through some examples to see how these work. But I just wanted you to see the fact that this dialog box comes in multiple forms. Now that I've selected advanced, because I have multiple columns, it means that I can no longer select that basic option. So I'll just click cancel, and then let's start with our first example. In our first example, we're going to summarize this data down to show the average sale by product. So I'll select the product column, and then I'll select group by from the transform ribbon. You can see that the product column has been selected there. I can change it here if I wish. Now I want to give my new column a name. I'll call it average sale. The operation I want to perform will be average. You can see other options in there and we'll look at some more of those in a few moments time. The column that I want to average is my value column. I can then just click OK. And very quickly and easily, that has now summarized down this data to just show the product and the average sale. For example two, I want to summarize this data by product and customer and show the total sale and the total transaction count for each of that product and customer combination. So I'm gonna start by selecting customer and from transform, I'll click group by. So it's opened up on the basic view. If I had selected multiple columns before clicking group by, it would have opened automatically on the advanced option. From here, I can add another grouping. So I want it by customer and by product. And let's say I want these switched the other way around. So I can click on the three dots and select move up. Now I want to add some aggregations. So the first one is called total sales. So that's a sum based on the value column, then I want the total transactions. The total transactions, and that will be the count of the rows. I don't need to add a column in there because it doesn't matter which column I use because it's just counting the specific rows. And click OK, and that has now given me a summary by product and customer with the total sale and the total transactions. In example three, we want a text list of everybody who has sold to a specific customer. So for example, Wilson's of Greenvale, we can see that Sally sold to them. We can see that David has, or if we look at ABC discounts, you can see that Sally sold to them as has Mark. So we just want a list of everyone who has sold to each customer. So I'll start by selecting customer and then click group by. My new column name, I'm going to call sales by. Now in this operation, we have primarily numerical operators. So sum, average, median. Now they won't work if we're using text, which we are. And all rows returns a table, and we'll see that in a few moments time. So therefore I'm going to select sum, knowing full well that this will create an error. And the last column I want 
is the sold by column because that's what we want to summarize by. I'll click OK. As expected, this creates an error. And this is because we've used the list.sum function on a text column. So let's change this to text.combine. I still want that on the sold by column. I'll enter a comma. And there you can see that we need another argument. And that is the separator. So in there, I'll just enter a comma within double quotes. I'll click away. Perfect. That now gives us that list of everybody who's sold to each customer. However, you can see that sometimes, for example, summer based stores, we've got Sally, Sally, Mark, Jack, and Sally again. So that's not ideal, the fact that they are repeated. So we're going to use list.distinct on our sold by column so that it then creates that distinct list before it then joins all of those text values together into that value. Example four is an illustration of how we can use the all rows option. This is useful for many advanced transformations. So for example, let's say I select my customer column and then click group by. My new column name, I'm going to call table and I'm going to select all rows. So what this will do is it will give me all the rows that relate to that customer. I'll click OK. So my customer column has now been summarized down. If I select my table at the bottom, you can see that it's just got the items that relate to ABC discounts. Or if I click Wilson's of Greenvale, you can see that table at the bottom there only shows the rows that relate to that customer. So if for whatever reason we wanted to, we could drill into that table and just see the rows that related to that customer. So there you go, that's it for this video. We've seen some examples of how we can use the group by transformation to summarize data. Now, as I said at the start, we primarily use Power Query to prepare our data for calculation. But equally, if we wanted to, we could use this transformation to report on our data. So it automatically gives us that summary. So every time we click data refresh all, our report updates automatically. Well, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.